بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. This is our fourth lesson in the book Asul Sunnah by Imam Ahmed, and we were discussing in the last sitting about leaving Ahl Bida and leaving the people of innovation and desires and debating with them and arguing with them uh, regarding the religion. And some beneficial fawaid from Sheikh Sa'ad, Sa'ad ibn Nasr al-Shatri, Hafizullah Ta'ala, one of our ulama in Riyadh uh, and Fudala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve all of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So he mentioned with regards to leaving Bid'ah and leaving the people of desires, he said, where, where Imam Ahmed said, وَتَرْقَ khusumat and leaving off uh, controversies and debating. He said, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah yantalakuna or yatlakuna mina nasusa shari woman thumma fa in in min yujadil fil midlul and nasusa shari. Yuridu ibtalaha fa innana la nartadi tarikatuhu. So the person who wants the Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a, they use the principles regarding the religion from Kitab wa Sunnah, the Nasus. But a person who wants to argue from their own desires and based on falsehood. Ahl Sunnah is not pleased with them and Ahl Sunnah is away from them and leaves them. Because Ahl Sunnah, as the Sheikh says, he said, Bel wajib, that it's wajib to, to, to rule using the text of the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not our desires. And then the Sheikh used the ayat where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Qala Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala fi kitab al-Kareem, wa ma kana li mu'minin, wa la mu'minatin, إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرٍ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمْ الْحَيْرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ That is not befitting, it's not for the believing men or the believing women. That if Allah and His Messenger have legislated and, and judged in a matter for them to, to, eat, to, have, uh, to be in confusion and to be uh, light about the matter, but rather they... Uh, they, 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 they accept the, the believers accept the nusus. They accept, and what are the nusus? The nusus is from the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then the Sheikh he mentioned a very important ethic that I wanted to mention. He mentioned a hadith actually of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Sunan Abi Dawood. He said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. أنا ضمين ببيت في رب الجنة لمن ترك المراء ولو كان محقا. That in this hadith and Hassan who Sheikh Albani, Sheikh Albani said this hadith is Hassan. This hadith, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, I am promising the person who leaves off, uh, you know, having arguments related to the religion in order to support their themselves you know not to come to the truth but in order to support themselves even if they're on the truth up there there I promise him a place in Jannah a, a, a house in in, 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 in in a certain location in rub rub the Jannah so here we see and of course, this forms the usul of Ahl Sunnah because it comes from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his Sunnah, that leaving off mira, a mira, wa, uh, leaving off debating and argumenting and those kind of uh, things, especially in order to support our, our own desires and to support ourselves, to make ourselves look bigger in the debate, to make us look good, that this leaving it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you're on the truth, is better than to, to argue and debate and win 
the debate and the discussion, especially if you're not making ta'zim of the nasus and the haq, but you're making ta'zim of yourself, meaning that you're not uh, basically glorifying and, 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 saying, and, and putting forth the haq it's first and foremost the reason that you're discussing and having that discussion and, you, and, you, and you're dealing with the issue. But rather you're looking to your own, uh, you know, to, 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 to make yourself appear better and more knowledgeable. Then this is a mizmoom and this you should leave. So it shows that even with regards to the truth that at times if, if it's becoming just a debate and discussion to prove that you're bigger and better then it's better. And the Prophet ﷺ said he promised the person who leaves that, Jannah. That they are promised a house in Jannah. And may Allah bless us with that house in Jannah. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, some of the other fawaid or benefits that the Shaykh mentions, Hafidhullahu Ta'ala, with regards to the people of desires, is that the people of desires, they don't, Deal, they don't necessarily follow the nasus. For them, following the text of the Quran and the Sunnah is secondary or other than their desires and other than their madhab or their minhaj or their, their uh, way of, 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 of creed and ideology. So that, of course, that being sinful. And the Sheikh mentions that they are of two types, these people. He said there are those who follow their desires, and this is no doubt they're on misguidance, and this is a mistake. Sinful. Some of the, they, they just follow their desires. You know, brother, I, I had a person from one of the Jama'at, Jama'at Tablik, I discussed with him, and he's a person, Mutadayan, praying always. I, always sitting in ijtima and, and been doing jamaat al you know, going for khuruj for 20 years, I'm sure. At least since I've known him, since I became Muslim, and that's 20 years. I've seen him, you know, make a khuruj and sitting and making the extra effort and, 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 and doing ibadah. May Allah guide him and forgive him for his mistakes and his mukhalifat and minhaj. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and us, well, for all of our mistakes and sins. And so, I, I, I remember speaking to him, he mentioned about a hadith, and it was a hadith that Shaykh al-Albani said is, is totally fabricated, fabricated. It's not even a hadith, meaning that this is a saying of the people, it, when you make, you know, Shaykh al-Albani was an alam, muhaddith, he was from Ahl hadith that was his job, that was his wadifa, is that he spent his time, his effort, his energy, looking into the books of hadith, looking into the authenticity of a hadith. And he said, this is a fabricated hadith. And I mentioned that to the brother in a nice way, but he was, it showed his ta'asab, his, his madhab came out, meaning that he's, he's firmly on this, regardless of whether the haq comes to him, regardless of whether ahl hadith the people who specialize in this fin, you know, he, he said, brother, I don't listen to modern day uh, scholars or something like this. So I was shocked. There's nothing to debate after that because our realm is not even the same, nor would it have been beneficial. Instead, I gave him, made clear for him the haq, and it wasn't even a matter of him looking at the hadith and saying, well, you know, and my, my sheikh says it's sahih or anything like this, but instead it was, I do not take from modern day scholars or these other people, you know, so it was, it was a matter of his madhab, of just being on a path, regardless of whether it's the truth or it's on falsehood. And this is the shameful thing. So this is a very dangerous thing. This is following Hawa. Then the Sheikh mentioned the second type, is the person who follows their desires and they take their desires as lords. And this is what uh, the Sheikh mentioned, and, and uh, first and foremost, it comes from uh, an ayat in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about those people who take their desires as ilah, as gods, or as aliha. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. So this is a very dangerous thing, and this shows us that ta'asab, blind following, and being prejudiced towards a particular thing. My Sheikh said this, there's nothing else in the, in the you know, regardless of whether it goes with the delil or not. 
we are ordered, and this is what the Asul Sunnah, Asul Sunnah, Asul Sunnah, Asul Sunnah Indana, as Imam Ahmed said, the Asul Sunnah Indana, Tamasik, is, is adhering to the uh, to Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their path, Radi Allah Ta'ala Majma'een, adhering to what they were upon. That's the Usul Sunnah. The Sunnah Sunnah is going to the Galil. It's going, as we mentioned, the four maratib, the Qur'an, the sunnah, the ijma'ah. Ijma'ah is coming from where? What's the asal of the jama'ah? The asal of the jama'ah, the root, the foundation of the sunnah, the foundation of the jama'ah, as Imam Ahmed said in the very text, is going to what the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, were upon. They're the asal of ahl sunnah to Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. It's the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are the origin of Ahl Sunnah. And we go back to what they were upon and how they understood the religion. And then the fourth level is Qiyas as Sahih, is analogy, a sound analogy based on Kitab wa Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf. This is the Sul Sunnah. This is the foundation of the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And another benefit the Sheikh mentioned with regards to the the problem. The Sheikh uh, goes into the issue. And due to the weather, we can't really come out with the book too much. But the Sheikh mentions about Jidal. About making this kind of argument. He mentions that it's of... It's of two types. There's the kind which is, you know, when, when there's a, in those necessary, and there's conditions for debating, as we said, that when it becomes necessary, there is the debating which is permissible and the debating which is impermissible. So he said uh, the permissible kind or, or the impermissible kind, he said that is, the, that is debating and making jidal an argument when it is in contradiction to the nusus, to the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the Ijma and Qiyas Sahih. So when it's in, in, in contradiction to the nusus, meaning the Qur'an and the Sunnah, then that is, uh, that is mithmum, that is impermissible. And then he said the other type, he said, uh, then the Jidal, that, that when a person, they have good manners, and, and, and are respectful. Or the Sheikh said, in, in fact, that the, uh, the Jidal, this is the second type of sinful Jidal. He said that that is even when a person is they are uh, making argumentation, even if they have good manners and they're respectful. That this is also sinful if they're doing argumentation and it has uh, it's not in agreement with the nas or the nasus, or it is in order to uh, make themselves look uh, better and make themselves look more knowledgeable or what have you. That that's also sinfulness, and this is what we are ordered to to leave, and this is what Imam Ahmed. And the madhab of the Salaf is regarding that. And then, for example, he, he gives an example of the person that that the or he, he mentioned that he mentions the nas which shows us that this 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 uh, jidal is madhmum and and disliked and 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 something sinful. He says, "Qala Allah Taala." That verily those who divide and divide their groups, their, their religion into sects, that they're, they're not upon anything. Letting us know that jidal, argumentation in those things, the consequence of this is it causes divisions between the Muslims. It causes the Muslims to hate one another and, and despise one another. And at times, as his, unfortunately has been all throughout history, shed one another's blood over that. May Allah protect us from that. But this is what goes on. It goes on in many places that are in turmoil. And a lot of it, it, it comes from that. 
There's many situations where the people, Akhwan al-Muslimin, have killed people from Ahl sunnah great imams like Imam Sheikh, Sheikh uh, Jamal al-Afghani, rahimahullah ta'ala, was killed by Akhwan al-Muslimin. And you'll, you'll have those situations because of this discord between the, the, the this discord regarding the religion, regarding religious issues. And that's not befitting of Ahl Iman. And that's what Imam Ahmed was speaking against. Some of the other uh, benefits the Sheikh was mentioning. Then moving on to the next uh, portion of the treaties, Qala Imam Ahmed Rahimahullah Ta'ala was Sunnah Indana and the Sunnah to us Athara Rasulillah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Sunnah to Fasr al Quran. Wahi Wahia Dila il al Quran. So we'll stop there. So the Shaykh said Rahimahullah Ta'ala that the foundation of the sunnah to us is adhering to the athar of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning the, 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 um, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the ahadith. And then he goes on to say that the sunnah explains the Quran. And it is the evidence... It, it evidences and supports the meaning of the Qur'an. It explains and it is evidence to supporting the meaning of the Qur'an. That's what the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. So the Shaykh says, The sunnah in the Athar Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Shaykh Shatri, Hafiz Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned, Yani ma uthira an the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fa'inhu yafasal al-Qur'an. Fa'inna fi al-Qur'ani al-Fadhin mujmala ja'at sunnah so that the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said regarding that statement of Imam Ahmed he said it means that the ahadith and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it came it is a type of, uh, of revelation to, that came to explain the Quran and that is due to the fact that in the Quran, which is the divine speech, perfect speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that some of the ayats in the Quran are general. And the sunnah came in order to make them more clear and more specific, to clarify and specify. And then he said, وَمَنْ أَمْثِلَةِ ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ And he says, from, from the examples of this, is the statement of Allah Taala where he says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمُ وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ And establish the prayer. Pray. Allah orders us with salat. In Surah Al-Baqarah. The Shaykh mentions, he says, فَهَذَا هَذَا لَفْ يَحْتَاجَ لَتَوْضِيحِ وَبَيَانِ مِنْ جِيَةَ كَيْفِيَةَ الصَّلَاةِ فَجَاءَتَ سُنَّةَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ تُوَضَحُ كَيْفِيَةَ الصَّلَاةِ This is beautiful. The Shaykh said, then that statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it requires a, a little bit, a bit more clarity on how to pray. So it doesn't, it, it doesn't take uh, much thought to see that, okay, Allah has commanded us to pray. We have to pray. And we've already said this countless times, Al-Amr Yafid al wujub that whenever we have a command in the Quran and the Sunnah, that the asal of that command is that it necessitates that it's an obligation. So here we have a text where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to pray. The Shaykh says that that statement of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala requires that the sunnah, the sunnah came to explain it so that we know how 
We, it's not a debate about the wujub, that it's an obligation, but we need to know what it means to make salat. Or otherwise, everyone would make salat in their own way. If it just said, waqimu salat, and we just went from the Qur'an. So this is a refutation of those people, the Qur'aniyun, those people say, you know, we follow the Qur'an, we don't follow the Sunnah. That's batil. And that is, you know, those people who say that, they're on different levels. There are some of them who absolutely, they're not even Muslim. You can't even consider them Muslims. If they reject the Sunnah outright and say, no, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, we don't have to follow Hadith, you know, whatever whatever their excuses are, that they, they're in fact not even following the Qur'an because the Qur'an says, Allah, wa Rasul. All throughout the Qur'an, Allah says, and follow Allah, uh, 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 and follow the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. All throughout the Qur'an, it says that. But those uh, individuals, they reject the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which is wahi. That means they're rejecting the Quran because the Quran says that. But getting back to the to the issue at hand, the Sunnah explains the Quran. Otherwise, the people would be praying in various fashions. Some people would pray like we see some of the Aga Khani, Aga Khaniya and and some of these other people who and the Ahmadians who pray three times a day. Other people, uh, some of the Ahbash, especially when they came into America and stuff, they used to try to change the way of the Qibla. One of the fitnas and, and shubahat that they brought is they used to, especially here in Washington State in Seattle, we're very familiar with that, is when they came, they used to tell us and confuse us because we're a new Muslim and tell us the Qibla, no, 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 the Qibla, the people are praying the wrong way. So they used to try to change the Qibla. وَعِيَذَ billah min dharika. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliate them and guide them. Amin ya rabbil alameen. And... So, to know how to pray, we have to go to the Sunnah. The Sunnah explains, it makes clear for us what aqimu salat means. Now we know, we, we, we understand the meaning. The meaning is clear. But the kafiya, the how, is unclear. It's not explained in the Quran. We know that from the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he prayed five times a day. Buni Islam al-Khams. Islam is built in five pillars. That it's uh, one of the pillars of Islam. We understand that from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We understand how, that it, it begins with takbir and it ends with taslim. We understand that from what? From the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Sunnah explains the Qur'an. That's the meaning of that statement. That's a beautiful statement of Imam uh, Baba Hari, who was a little bit after Imam Ahmed, who was on the madhab of Imam Ahmed, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, who also said, a Sunnah yufassar al-Qur'an. You know, and and letting us know also the importance of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he called it Imam Baba Hari a Sunnah, al Islam who a Sunnah was Sunnah to heal Islam, that Islam is the Sunnah, and the Sunnah is Islam, and you can't have one without the other. They're they're one and the same. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we have sent to you, sent unto you a dhikr, a reminder. What is this reminder? It's, it's, it's لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ We have sent to you a, a reminder in order to make clear for the people, what has been revealed to them or what has descended upon them. So here, the sunnah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said a dhikr, as the shaykh mentions, he said, for sunnah samaytu huna dhikr. So in this ayat, the sunnah is referred to as dhikr in this ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa anzalna ilayka dhikra. A dhikr here in this ayat is the sunnah. And then he says, وَهِيَ الَّتِي تَفَسَرَ مَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ And it explains what was revealed in the Qur'an. That's imperative for us to know. قَالَ إِبْنْ كَثِيرٍ فِي تَفْسِيرٍ إِبْنْ كَثِيرٍ رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Mentions about this very same ayat. He 
is that this ayat refers in reference to the Prophet ﷺ with the meaning that this dhikr is the uh, what descended, what was revealed to you, meaning the sunnah, and your, uh, your striving to preserve it and follow it and your knowledge that and and and, and then we have uh, we have knowledge that you are the best meaning the prophet sallallahu alaihi was the best of uh, of creation and he was the the uh, the best of the children of adam sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that it meaning the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explains and makes clear anything which contained in the Quran that we find difficulty in finding the meaning that that is that those those uh, difficulties are rectified with the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam and this is what we learn and the benefit of learning the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and following it. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with Al Nafi Ruskan Taibu Amina Mutakabin. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wasallallahu Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wasallam.